I have been switching between the iPhone and Android for the past three years or so, but with the iPhone 15 launch, is it finally time to say goodbye to my S23 Ultra and hello to the iPhone 15? And spoiler alert, it is. And it's not about the ecosystem or better cameras or faster charging or anything like that. In fact, many of these reasons aren't even being talked about. But before you get your pitchforks out and set my house on fire, hear me out because the Switch is not as simple as it might seem. Now, for those of you switching from iPhone to Android, there's a process that you'll have to go through to find alternatives for the iPhone version of the apps you use because they just don't exist on Android, which is all well and good for you when you have the freedom to look for alternative apps. Now, Todoist has been a great task app. Google Calendar has also been a great alternative to Fantastical. Now, Beeper has made replying to messages from all of my accounts way, way easier by having it all in one place, regardless of you know, which device I'm using at that time. But when it comes to apps that you need Need because you either need them for work or perhaps you just own other smart devices which need an app installed to actually function. That's where the problems begin. Now I'm really into my fitness right now and I'm having to be really careful about which devices I buy because not all of them have support for Android. And I'm a school governor for my kid's school, but the app we use to manage everything, to store all our documents and communicate with each other, just isn't available on Android. And over the years, time and time again, we see this. Remember Clubhouse? It was quite popular during like COVID, which was iPhone for a very, very long time. And for good reason. If a startup wants to get their device or app into the hands of the most people for the least amount of work, then develop for iOS first, because you do it once and it works across every Apple device, all phones, all tablets, even to a certain extent, all Macs with the ability to run iOS apps on Mac OS. And with iPhone, data shows that iPhone users are the quickest to update to the latest version each time, which then means even less for iOS developers to worry about. Now, a comparison to do the same on Android, it is hugely complicated as they have to develop for well, thousands of variations of what an Android device can be. You've got flips and folds and tall phones and thin phones and all requiring different dimensions and all running different versions on Android. All of this means that if you need to use an app that isn't available on Android, then well, it's either time consuming to find a workaround, costly to buy a device that you prefer just less because it works with your Android phone, or like me, you end up carrying two phones with you at any one time, perhaps a, a work phone and a personal phone. But these development issues then introduces another problem, app experience, because even when the developer designs their Android app, there are so many variables that it is difficult to stay on top of. Now, over the past year, I have repeatedly run into issues on the Android apps when the iPhone app works just fine. Now, the latest one I've seen is an app that lets you see detailed battery statistics from your Android phone. And the Twitter thread is a fascinating read as people are reporting all sorts of like weird battery readings, including some people reporting an impossible battery capacity of over 100%. Another one I've come across, I use my gym app regularly to order food and drink, and I guess also go to the gym as well. And the Android version will hang, it will crash, where the iPhone version just works flawlessly every time. I've also tried to sign into a coffee shop's app to use my points to buy a free coffee. And on my Pixel Fold, it told me that it can't log in using an embedded browser, but there's no option to log in using an external browser. And I am a huge fan of using Nova Launcher to customize my Android experience, but it just dumps on me sometimes. It just won't even let me type. Now, some of these I can get used to and work around like you do with bugs that you see on any device from time to time. But I've also run into issues with more important apps like my health insurance app where the more I exercise and generally keep fit, the more I score points, which then means I can get a free Apple Watch. It pays for my Amazon Prime membership. I get free cinema tickets, free coffee, and just a ton more benefits. So when it doesn't sync my workouts, it's a real problem. And it actually costs me money, even though I've been keeping fit. Now, I am not saying that the iPhone is totally bug free either, but I've not had anywhere near the number of issues on my iPhone before. Now, speaking of fitness, like I said, this is an area where I'm trying to improve on lately, exercise, sleep, nutrition, yeah, all that good stuff. And this, of course, totally depends on the types of devices you're using over on the Android ecosystem, but I just found it overly complicated. You've got Google Fit, you've got Samsung Health. There's also Fitbit, which kind of replaces Google Fit, but doesn't quite, so you need both. I also switched over to a Garmin watch for a while, and then I had to install a specific health sync app, which then ran every few hours to sync my data from Garmin to the other health apps. But it won't sync certain metrics like steps just because they don't want you to. Now, my wife is thinking about switching to a Google Pixel right now, but she wants a Garmin watch. And even I get stressed when I explain that 
She needs to use Google Fit, Fitbit, Garmin's own app, and an app to sync everything between all of these apps. It's just madness when all I can think of is it just works. Now, if any app needs to talk to Apple Health, you just check a few boxes and it's done. Everything is in this one place and all apps, generally speaking, lead to this one. One thing I've also noticed, though I can't fully test, is that Apple's health has the ability to connect directly with professional healthcare. Like here, that's the NHS, where you can access your medical record, your blood results, and just all sorts. But here in the UK, there are only two hospitals that seem to support this. Like mine's not included, but I understand this is wider reaching in the States, but it just doesn't seem available. It doesn't seem to exist on Android. Now this is as close as I'm gonna get to uh, without mentioning that word, but the simplicity around Apple is, well, one of the main reasons why many people stick with Apple. Before I tell you about two of the key reasons though, why I'm considering a switch back to the iPhone, we need to thank the sponsor for today's video, NordVPN. Now, did you know that if you put a pineapple upside down in your shopping trolley, apparently it means that you're open to switch. But did you also know that there is a device called a pineapple that is so affordable that people are using them to fake free public Wi-Fi? And the problem is it is so clever that you won't even know if you've been affected. Because for all intents and purposes, you head into Starbucks, you grab your coffee, grab a seat, and then you pull out your phone or your laptop and just carry on browsing the web. Maybe you sign into a few websites, maybe you buy something, and maybe all of what you're doing is actually whilst connected to one of these pineapple devices, which is logging everything you're doing, your usernames, your passwords, credit card numbers, all of this without your knowledge. And then a few months later, you discover someone has stolen your identity or your card details, and it is impossible to trace it back to that coffee at Starbucks. Now this is where NordVPN comes in to stop this from happening and for less than half of the cost of just one Starbucks coffee per month. Now simply sign up using the exclusive discount down below, install the app, and now you can use public Wi-Fi without worrying about whether a pineapple is involved or not. It's risk-free, there is a 30-day money-back guarantee, and that is just one of the many things that NordVPN can do for you across iOS, across Android, so it doesn't matter which side of the fence you're on. Speaking of fences, one of the biggest things that has drawn me to Android over the years has been the hardware. Now we all know Apple takes a very, very long time to get anything. On Android, we've got super fast charging, we've got flips and folds and reverse wireless charging, USB-C, we've got five times and 10 times optical zoom cameras, the S Pen, and great features like Samsung DeX, and just so, so many more. But in terms of features that matter, to me, the big ones that drew me to the S23 Ultra in particular were the 10 times telephoto camera, USB-C, and to some extent, the faster charging, which mostly have just come to the iPhone. Now I know, I know, Android still innovates faster than Apple, that is pretty clear, but the most important features for you are, well, exactly that, the most important features for you, and you shouldn't let other people or peer pressure or YouTubers or anything dictate which device you should choose, because it is a very, very personal decision on which phone you have nowadays. You can spend anything from under 200 bucks right through to 2,000 bucks and get pretty much whatever feature is most important to you on your device. But there is one area, one area that I've tried and tried again to switch to Android, and I just, I just can't. And for some reason, it all comes down to this, the Apple Watch. Now the Apple Watch is fast, it's fluid, it's, it can keep up with you when you're swiping between apps and starting timers and doing a workout and setting reminders and even the sometimes horribly bad voice assistant works sometimes. It is something that still boggles my mind as to how we don't yet have an Android watch that can match the speed of an Apple watch. And I have tried. Everyone told me to get a Garmin Phoenix 7X, which had a crazy like month long battery life. Only discovered that it's a great fitness watch. Give it that, but it's not a great smartwatch. Now I thought the latest Galaxy Watch 6 would finally, like finally solve all of these problems. I was so set on being ready to you know, fully commit to the Android ecosystem. But when I did do my test with the Galaxy Watch, it was a real disappointment. It's slow, it's laggy. And it's definitely not something that I would have come to expect from something that's in its sixth generation. Now, considering you can choose either the ultra expensive and rugged Apple Watch Ultra, right down to the more affordable Apple Watch SE and get almost all of the same features whilst also being fast and fluid, then well, yeah, if you value a smartwatch over a more of a you know, fitness type watch, then there is no, currently, no beating the Apple Watch. But that is not the full story here. Like the whole Apple versus Android debate is one that is far bigger than any one person on the internet can explain in one single video, and many of us have tried, myself included. Now, I've been trying out all of the, the latest and the greatest Android phones over the past year, and I'm gonna continue doing this because whilst iPhone is, in my opinion, the more dependable option, Android to me is still more exciting, it's fun, and overall just more enjoyable to use. For example, when I'm doing a gym workout, 
the one thing that drives me absolutely crazy with Apple is that I'll be listening to music as most people do in the gym and I might need to check my form on a specific exercise in whatever you know, fitness app I'm using. So my music stops playing whilst it's being replaced with whatever video I'm now watching to check my form. But when I go back to my music, the iPhone has totally forgotten what I was doing. So now I have to hunt for the music app and hit play again. Even though Apple has this whole flipping dynamic island thing, which can be used for multiple applications at any one time, apparently it doesn't work for two lots of audio at any one time. Whereas over on an Android phone, I can literally just swipe between the two different audio sources to quickly go back to my music. Now, not only that, but I can send different audio from two different apps to two different pairs of headphones at once. So I could be watching YouTube with my headphones whilst my kids are listening to music on their headphones. And Galaxy's routines are so incredibly useful. Like when doing this, then make that happen. Apple's own shortcuts pales in comparison. It's pretty limited compared to what you do with Samsung routines. So the question you need to ask yourself is what features are important to you? And then decide for yourself which phone you enjoy the most. And for God's sake, don't listen to anyone, like me included, on which side of this fence you should sit because, well, spoiler alert, they are both just as good as each other. Until next time.